Juan Rodolfo Wilcock was an Argentine writer. He was born in 1919 in Buenos Aires, the son of Charles Wilcock and Ida Romigiali, and attended the University of Buenos Aires. He left Juan Perón's Argentina and eventually settled in Italy. He died in 1978 in Ubriano. We will review his 1972, The Temple of Iconoclasts, mixing fictional biographies with some real ones, though the entries on real people are often the shortest and devoid of the fantastic and so easily spotted. Jose Valdez y Prom is a sorcerer who disrupts the scientific congress by making every single person there believe they are Jose Valdez y Prom, before falling to death off his balcony. Jules Fumar decides to write an 850-page dictionary, which is also a bawdy and lewd narrative full of fake nuns and murder. Aaron Rosenblum plans to abolish the 20th century and return the world to the glory days of 1580, even if he must abolish the Eiffel Tower and Newton and restore slavery to do so. But he winds up being killed by a German plane while guarding a completely unimportant warehouse in Yorkshire during World War II. Aram Kugiungian is an Armenian emigre who keeps discovering other people who also happen to be him at the same time, such as Elizabeth Taylor, Vyacheslav Molotov, Eleanor Roosevelt, or Chiang Kai-shek. The Brazilian minister Fyodor Georgescu has the idea of keeping 227 corpses of African Brazilians pickled in salt tanks with a complimentary heading to best preserve them for Judgment Day. We then are told of the very real Roger Babson's quest to abolish gravity through many essays written on the topic in New Boston, a city founded coincidentally by himself. Klaus Nachknecht finds death as he tries to bring about his pet project of a series of health resorts built on the sites of active volcanoes. Absalom Ahmed builds a giant philosophy machine, one of whose immortal phrases is, the cat is indispensable to the progress of religion. Then we are told that, according to Reverend Charles Russell, the second coming happened in 1874 and no one noticed. We have Henrik Lorgion trying to find the liquefied element of beauty, and after 237 attempts to steal seven drops of it, before it and the museum in Emmen are blown up by the Germans, and Lorgion is hanged for calcining a 14-year-old boy in a copper boiler. The real Hans Herbinger of Vienna and his glacial cosmogonia brought up, along with the claim the Earth used to be orbited by six other moons, leading to the formation of cosmic ice theory, talking of an ice-covered moon melting as it got too close to the sun and causing Noah's flood, and asserting the stars are really giant blocks of ice, whose images were doctored by those wily astronomers, while other followers of the esteemed Herbinger claim Eve's creation from a rib was just describing a C-section, Benedict Luss tells us how childbirth can be made painless by attaching clothespins to the patient's toes. Dr. Herrera showed his interest in perfecting suspended animation by clinically dehydrating 50 geriatrics at his brother's tobacco plant. Yet when he tries to reanimate his shrunken corpses in the harbor, the fish simply eat whatever is left. We are also given a brief description of a real US patent filed in 1914 by Socrates Schollfield concerning an optical device used to demonstrate the existence of a supreme being this being patent number 1087186. Lawrence Ribber, the Catalan director, who was devoured by a lion, believed himself to be a rabbit, and forced them in various guises, dead, alive, stuffed or made of cloth, onto the stage, whether it made sense or not, such as a Swiss family drama, where all the actors wear papier-mâché rabbit masks. Then an argument about blue bottle eggs leads to the mother-in-law committing suicide. But this entry quickly becomes tedious, with descriptions of five of his fictional plays, each several pages long. At least the last play ends with a king being devoured by a rabbit. And if the tediousness was not bad before, this is followed by four pages listing item after item of silly inventions, which stop being funny halfway through the first page. And there are four of them. The book is sometimes enjoyable, but the final stretch is incredibly tedious.